Welcome back to the Warrior Church. Uh, if you're here for the first time, the purpose of this ministry is geared towards preventing and fronting <clears throat> the problem of veteran suicide in the U.S. of A. Right. Um, the aspect in which we do this is to educate uh, veterans and first responders on the Word of God, what God has to say about it. Uh, we do through do so through the uh, aspect of spiritual warfare, <clears throat> um, training and equipping them in such a way that, so that they can be healed, saved, and delivered. Right? There's uh, lots of programs out there right now. Um, VA has programs, government has programs, all of them will lead you down different paths, uh, whether it's a bottle uh, or a joint or a prescription bottle. Uh, some will twist you and contort you up into uh, yoga. Uh, some will uh, give you the visions of Valhalla. Uh, this ministry is different. This one's going to give you the impartial word of God and what he has to say. All right. uh, Ecclesiastes 3.3 3 says there's a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to break down and there's a time to build up. All right. The hope is that we can break down the word of God together as I go through the journey, <clears throat> this journey with you. Uh, so that we can build ourselves up once again um, so that we may heal from the things that we experience. Uh, some of us experience different things, whether it's uh, enemy death, whether it was a uh, friendly death uh, through the result of you know, combatants or even fratricide, uh, or whether it was uh, unnecessary death of innocent bystanders and civilians. Uh, these things happen in conflicts and in war and special military operations, and there's no way around it. Uh, we do our best to mitigate it, but uh, we're really kind of the only ones fronting it. All right, so the hope is that we can heal together, right? And also for the first responders, because they experience things in a similar fashion, and they may encounter veterans who are on the brink. Um, <clears throat> so that is our hope. Uh, if you don't know me, Captain Samoa here, all right, uh, simple background. I served in the Missouri Militia for 15 plus years now. Uh, made my way up, grass to brass, been places, done things uh, from time to time. I've also served in a uh, boys' ministry, second largest to the Boy Scouts, called Royal Rangers. Uh, we were part of two patrols there, eight, Outpost 91, here in the great state of Missouri. Uh, two patrols, uh, pre K up to first grade and second grade through uh, fifth grade. So we had Ranger kids and Discovery Rangers. And we trained them up to not just be men, but to be godly men. We focused on both uh, Bible merits and skill merits. All right, uh, so a recap of last time, uh, we covered uh, some more garments, kind of uh, extra credit to the Ephesians armor of God uh, that is now complete. Now we're talking about some other things that is going on. All right, the current date of this video is the 6th of February, 2024. <clears throat> and uh, I just want to pause right here before we get into it uh, and kind of share um, and be open in the office with you. Uh, there was a time that I had over the weekend where I found myself and I found a feeling that I hadn't felt in a long time. Um, I was feeding my baby girl, her bottle, sitting on uh, the recliner in the office, and uh, I just broke out in tears, All right. and uh, as I'm feeding her and as I'm, my tears are dropping on her, I'm feeling this feeling of <sighs> that I'm not fulfilling my purpose, right, as a father, as a man of the household, to be a provider, to be protector to be priest uh, there's so much more I could be doing but in that moment it was specifically for providing at the time of this video you know um, probably historically for now there are a lot of changes there's a lot of challenges uh, us here just an average Joe with you are being crushed in the middle class right all the problems check the boxes whether it's economic whether it's social whether it's uh, infrastructure uh, whether it's information a lot of things actively moving at this time. Um, 
You can check all the threat boxes too. There's a lot of powers that are at play, a lot of pieces being moved on the board. So there's a lot of pressure on everybody that's out there. And I can only imagine if you're also dealing with these things, how much that just compiles on the program. So just know that I sympathize with you. I know those things aren't true. I know it's because of these current conditions and things of that nature, but it still falls to me as a responsibility. And I felt inadequate. I felt inadequate to be providing. I didn't change anything. We work decent jobs. We get supplemental income and we're fucking struggling. Right. And that's just the reality of it. But hopefully, God willing, as he poured out in his spirit to comfort me, even at that time, because he knew what was going on in my mind, and he was encouraging me right where I was at, um, I just knew that things were going to work out uh, by faith and not by sight as we operate. Uh, I don't see it. I know I'm doing what I can. And like a good father, he's going to let you do what you can do. Right? He doesn't raise dummies. All right. So the hope is that at the end of it, we'll experience the abundance and the provision of the Lord, uh, Yehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. So just a little side note. Uh, today I want to get into something different, another aspect of the clothing. So justice. Justice is your TLO today. All right. This is a very unique one. It may not seem much. I'm going to reference a few things for you. First one I'm going to reference for you comes out of Job. All right, chapter 29, 14. And this is during the rapport with God and Job. And uh, he says, oh, they just turn here, stand by. All right, now we're going into it. Chapter 29, verse 14. Everything I did was honest. Righteousness covered me like a robe, and I wore justice as a turban. All right. So this is interesting because uh, we've already talked about a piece of honor that goes on the head with salvation. But uh, now that we're talking about garments, or undergarments in this case, uh, if you want to wear all the things at once, uh, we're talking about the diadem in some translations. Uh, that was out of the NLT, so it says turban, which agrees with most. Uh, but the diadem is a headpiece. All right. Not wearing the armor actively executing justice right what does that look like all right i want to expand upon that just a little bit uh, i'm going to touch in the targum page 182 which is essentially the end of exodus um chapter 28 you're going to find uh the making of the ephod right uh the targum which is the palestinian and aramean translation so hebrew to aramean aramean to english uh, this is what it has to describe uh, the robe and uh, the crown. All right. And thou shalt make a mantle robe of the aphod and twined its thread of hyacinth. And the orifice shall be in the middle of its upper part. A border shall be up upon its opening round about its orifice. And the work of the sower as the orifice of the coat of mail. And it shall be that it shall not be rent. And the orifice shall be in the middle of its head, and the border shall surround the orifice. The work of a sower, like an opening of a coat of mail, shall it be, that it be not torn. And thou shalt make the hem of it of pomegranates, and of hyacinth, and of purple of crimson, and upon its hem around about the bells of gold, and around about them a golden bell of pomegranate and hyacinth of crimson, and a golden bell of pomegranate of hyacinth and crimson upon the border of the robe, round about their number seventy and one. And it shall be the vestment upon Aaron to minister its <clears throat> seventy-one. And the voice shall be heard at the time, and he hath entered the holy place and before the Lord, and at that time he cometh out, that he die not. By the flaming fire. All right, so this is the ephod that the high priest would go into. It puts a very great detail on the, the orifice of the robe. All right, 71 is a very unique number, uh, most likely representing the nations in intercession because Israel is chosen as God's people to reveal himself to the nations uh, via post depravity, the Tower of the Babel. All right. 
Now, the next few verses begin to describe the crown. And thou shalt make a plate, or a crown, of pure gold, and a grave upon it, a distinct engraving. There's a name that's presented here in all caps. And it says, Holiness to the Lord. And you should put it on, and twined ribbon and hyacinth, and to amends of the boldness of the face, and it shall be on the mitre, above the teflon of the head, and in the front of the mitre shall it be, and it shall be in the front of Aaron's forehead, from the time it was, and it comes. And Aaron shall bear the iniquity in the consecrated things, and the sons of Israel may consecrate, even all of their sacred gifts, if they are to have been incense. All right. So, justice as a diadem, a turban, or a crown, right, should be worn as such. I want to now bounce to Zechariah chapter 7. Chapter 7 in Zechariah is a very unique time. It is a time in judgment upon a nation. But there's this last ditch effort that is expressed here through justice. And it reads as follows. <clears throat> it's going to be Zechariah 7 verse 9. I'll read verse 8 as context. Then the message came to Zechariah from the Lord. Verse 9. This is what the Lord of the heavens' armies says. Judge fairly and show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress the widows, orphans, foreigners, and the poor. And do not scheme against one another. Alright? So, God's given his guidance during this time for a judgment upon the nation. He says, in the quarrels, in the chaos... This is what you should do that is right. It's a last-ditch effort. Put on the crown, the diadem, or the turban of justice, and execute it accordingly. And do not do these things. To do what is right in the Lord's eyes. Right? We must execute justice. Right? Governments know that revolutions are started and ended because of a form of injustice. Right? justice is not had. There are plenty of hills, again, to die on that are out here. Right? What's important is that we execute justice. We bring accountability. We show mercy to those who are in need of mercy. Right? It's important that we follow through. My hope and my blessed prayer to you is that uh, these would be your last ditch efforts, whatever it may be when everything comes to a culmination point, right? Because we're often judged, again, not for the things that we do, even though we know that we're judged for those things. Every spoken word, every thought, every good, every evil, every secret thing. But what hits the hardest is the things that we don't do, all right? Do we not execute justice, right? Again, in the previous video, we talked about how God wondered. There was no justice, and there was no man to execute what was right. All right. Hopefully we can man up and do the things that we need to do. Hopefully we can bring justice so the Lord doesn't have to. We can police ourselves because the world is counting on us to do so. All eyes are on us and we've been painted as the enemy. All right? Us, the normal people who just live their lives with a hope and a dream and a promise that we would have this blessed gift that is so, so precious and so dangerous to us, which is the gift of freedom and free will. And as a nation, we have these ideals, and we have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All those things are an obstacle for those who are the powers that be, who want to eliminate those things so that we may rely on them, so that they can only promise the last part, the pursuit of happiness, it will be an ever-ending pursuit because they will never deliver on the happiness. All right, as a reminder, I'm going to let you know that our enemies are not flesh and blood. We don't wrestle or struggle with them, but rather principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right, remember, the thief only come 
to steal, kill, and destroy, but the life and the truth and the way has overcome the world. Right? And there is hope. Remember that the enemy is a roaring lion seeking who he may devour and prey. Don't be caught vulnerable. Build yourself up. Find that purpose. Plan. Prayer. Prepare. Train. Do it with friends. Do it with those you love, that you trust, that you can ride and die with. Right? Remember that you're an imagery of God, right? Both male and female, he who made him in the beginning. Which puts you in enmity with the world, right? And the world is not your friend, it is an enemy. But remember, the important thing is that you survive, right? You don't gotta be good, you just gotta be good enough. We know that good isn't good enough when it comes to the measurement of the Lord. But you gotta remember that you don't realize how important you are. It's important that you stay. Don't give in to the lies. There is no easy way out. We must struggle. That is the theme of the Bible. Endure and endure to the end. All right, the character of the Lord is patience, perseverance, and long suffering. And at the end of it, we do not refine as tin or iron, but rather as silver or gold. Be blessed, church. This is all I have time with you. I hope this encourages you in some way. I hope it edifies you. I hope it sharpens you as iron sharpens iron. Be blessed. I'll catch you on the next one.